G'day, how you going? This is Ian Harris from, whoa, whoa, something's wrong here. I'm just looking in the monitor. I forgot me jacket. Let's fix that up. Whoa, sorry about that. Lucky I've got that monitor there. Otherwise, I would have been doing this team topless, eh? Anyway, I'm Ian Harris from Australia, and g'day and welcome to my video. Now, it's a bit of a sad moment for me. It's only a little bit of a sad moment. You know why? Because this canvas is my last one. I've run out, I've got to make more, but this is my last one at the moment. So I'm gonna use this up and I've got a bit of a different idea for today's um, exercise. Now, I didn't know what to paint and I do know a lot of you like to keep up with what I'm up to and what I am painting. So I thought I'll do a bit of a mixture. So some of the paintings that I've done in the past here, uh, I'm gonna use a bit of bits and pieces of all of them and incorporate them into one, all right? So this canvas here, let's just see what size we are. There they are in centimetres. And where are we? We'll get the colours going up there like that as well as we always do. And you can pause it, read them, write them down, or whatever. All righty. So let's get into this. So I don't, I'm, I'm going to make it up as I go, but follow these sort of ideas out of these older paintings, all right? <laughs> Now down on my palette here, we'll start from scratch. I'm going to spray me canvas with some water and we'll put some of this flow white paint. I use it as a primer mixed with the retarder, all right? That's just on my canvas here. So I've got a, a brush, just a two inch brush. You can use any brush. This is just to apply the paint to the canvas. Have you got a good view of that? Yes, you have. So. Let's get the canvas. See, I, I, a lot of people ask me in my comments, what are you putting on your canvas first? Uh, and what are you spraying on it? This is just water, all right? And I'm gonna mystify it on there. I'm not drenching it so it's running down like a waterfall. I've just sprayed it on there so it's just, <coughs> it's there. All right, and it's there for a while. And this paint is a flowing white paint you can get from your art store. Um, it's it's more flowing and when I mix it with the retarder like that look at that just get it right on your brush don't muck around with it get it right on there with the big brush and we'll get it all on there this is for the sky I'm only going to be blending a sky in this so hence the paint that's having the retarder and the white flow as a base is the undercoat for where I'm going to blend. Whoa, easy boy. Now, get that down here. We'll just do the whole canvas, paint the whole canvas in that paint, that white flowing paint that I've primed up. Because I want a bit of a water down here. I want to put use like this mountain, where are we? This mountain with some water, some trees. But see how the trees are all one color? I want to create atmosphere, depth, and distance within my trees now. All right, now I just want to show you, in a beginner's way, the best way to achieve that. Okay, now my next color, I'm gonna use phthalo blue with a red tinge. Can you see that? Why I'm using a red tinge, because red and blue create a purple and in a distance of a sky I sometimes see purple all right so let's grab our applicating brush get that on the brush all right we'll start at the top we'll get it on all the way across the canvas and I want to bring it down twist the brush sideways and bring it to an atmosphere look at that you know you can start painting your sky with a with a brush like this, but that ain't a brush. That's a brush. So we're getting that all the way down to the atmosphere. And then I'm gonna come up again and try and smooth it. See here what's happening on the edge here? You can get the brush on its side like that. And come down. Now, I'm gonna just dab the brush, boom, where I reckon I want some of my water to be more happening, just like that. Wipe your roll, no, 
wipe your brush on your paper towel or whatever. And this, this half here is going to be water. So we'll, we'll just do that. Get that in there. You, if you want white, you just go like that. Add some white. Okay, now I'm grabbing a blending brush and this here, I want to blend, just tapping it and blending it so it's nice and smooth and there's no big ugly brush strokes, okay? Now the sky has got the colour in there and we've virtually got the layout for some water as well. Now we want to get some clouds in there. Down here I've got my titanium white and I've mixed it with some of the phthalo blue. Now I've just got the tiniest of red, just a primary red I'm using here because I want to get some sort of purple aspect going in there. That's it. Okay, I know I'm going to have the mountain maybe somewhere here and coming up. So this is where I want to create my clouds. I'm going to pick up that paint that I've mixed with the red and we'll put some clouds just like this. Put that down like a gentleman. Grab a blending brush and blend them down into the atmosphere because behind this mountain I want to create atmosphere. Okay, like that. Blend them. These are very distant small ones. I want to try and create this sky coming out and over us, not just a flat sky. All right, so let's put just a, maybe something there. Boom, boom. Let's hope I didn't, yeah, I did, I put too much there. I'm gonna blend that back down into the atmosphere. That'll do. Okay, our atmosphere is the bottom. Now we're gonna create the top. Now the next ones will go, these, these are going to have bottoms on them now, okay, to create that look of coming out and over our head. So we'll, we'll blend, I hope my head's not in the way. I'm just gonna start blending from the top, get the bottom. Now I'm bringing the bottom across like that, yes. And then we can blend the top willy nilly because we're gonna layer over that, that's that one done. Let's get this one down, find the bottom, Bring the bottom of that cloud across. Okay, that's looking good. We're gonna put these clouds on and the mountain will cover it up wherever. Now, we're gonna go another one here. This is gonna be the, and maybe a, let's say something bigger here. The bigger, they gotta get bigger and bigger as they're coming over our head, you know? All right, now let's blend that. I'll grab it different size blending brush now. I'll do this one first. Now I've got to keep that bottom on that one. And then blend him up. We've lost the bottom there, I want to get it back. See, even I have trouble with clouds. Okay, let's wipe your brush as well. Let's Get that, start the bottom, find his bottom, keep the bottom. There we go, I've got the bottom, and blend that up. All right. Okay, now I'm going to stop using that mixture with the red and the blue in it. I'm gonna to go to plain white again now, so I'm grabbing that on my fan brush. Now we wanna get these clouds. See, they're the atmosphere clouds in the background. Let's get something really be coming right across that one maybe let's see how this is going to turn out blend keeping the bottom on it yeah, there we go those other colors are already creating the depth and the shadow for your clouds there we go i'm going to put something in front of that we'll do a wipe the brush, wash the brush. So you're gonna start the new clouds with fresh paint again, fresh white paint. And we'll probably put something here. See, I'm deliberately getting my bottom area on. Okay. And then I'm going to come from there and blend down, find the bottom of the cloud. There we go, we've got the bottom of the cloud there. And then blend that up. 
Okay. How's that looking in the monitor? It's looking all right. Okay. All right, we'll put something over here. Now, I'm not gonna crisscross it. If anything, I'm gonna sort of move it with circle motions, okay? But keeping the, trying to keep the bottom of my cloud there, which is happening, pick up some more paint, come right across there, and that'll be blended up. Wipe your blending brush. Let's start here. That's it. Blend that cloud. Try not to destroy the white and the faded bit there, otherwise we're gonna lose the illusion of it coming out over our head. Blend that up. And now, we'll just finish the top of those clouds. They can, can be coming off the painting, but see here, now I wanna put some, some, blend that into there so we've got the top back and I've got a top to tickle, you know? That is going to be blended into that to make it one cloud. I've just built the top back. So we're blending that. We've got depth and shadows and all sorts in that cloud. Wipe the brush and then I'll tickle the tops a bit. Just like that, there we go. And what have we got over here? Anything over here? We could probably get the top of that back left there. Wipe my blending brush, blend that into there, tickle the top. All right, I'm grabbing the fan brush just to finish it off and I wanna look for some bits that probably can do with some highlighting here and there, okay? Now at this stage, we're gonna blow dry it because we're ready to put all the other dry colors on there that don't have to be blended. If anything, these very distant ones at the very back, you could have got a lot of little smaller ones. When you got time, you do them smaller, work out a layer, and what's that looking like? That's sort of looking like the sky's coming over anyway. Just a basic way for you beginners out there to get more of a dimension in your sky instead of flat, all right? Okay, I've got my flat brush. I'll just dampen it and then wipe it off on a towel so it's not dry. And like, where are we? Something like this mountain here. So as I said before, there's me, uh, me bottom cloud with the atmosphere. So I wanna keep the, the horizon under that. I don't wanna lose that. So I'm just gonna use some good old black. Any black will do, carbon black, ink black, whatever. And we'll roughly come across here, making it like the land. Uh, how did that mountain go? Oh, that's sort of up here like this, a bit high there, and coming down. So there's our mountain. So I'm going to block all that in now, except for where our water's going to go. So on this one, I might have it coming off the screen and over. So probably over here like that. It really pays to have a reference. That's like that, that's like that. All right, we'll just sort of bring it over here like that. So we're gonna block all that in with our beautiful black, all right? All right, just finishing off this blocking out of the black. Those of you who just started painting and don't understand why I've done it black, that acts as a good background for our depth. Now I'm gonna dry that so my other colors don't stick and mud up. We don't like mudding up, it's horrible. Okay, can you see this mountain in the background? We've just got the sort of rock sandy colors there and it's gonna uh, progress into grass and field. Simple way to do that, don't make it too complicated. Come down here on the palette. I've just got some simple Van Dyke brown and yellow oxide and we're gonna use some white as well. So we'll, we'll start off with the darker colour, Van Dyke Brown. I'm using a flat chisel brush, a flat head brush. Now in hindsight, I always like to make from the peak a little zigzag line to create your mountain ridge. So we're gonna virtually wherever we go and that's gonna create our mountain ridge like that, okay? And then this side will be the light side with all our 
Now, I'm getting it to the edge of the black. I want to put some of this on, get a bit of white from here. Mix it so it's kind of, grab some more. Can you see that? Mix it so it's marble looking. Now, we've, we know where we're gonna go, all right? Because we've done that. Now, this is gonna be the the ridge there. We're gonna, where are we? We're, we're just dabbing it on like that. Look how easy that is, eh? Dabbing it on, and it's gonna blend down here, okay? Just like that. Grab some more and start bringing it through. You can leave bits of black if you want. There's a bit of a high ridge there coming down. It's, it's sort of like rocks and the the grass all sort of intertwined with each other. But we want to also grab some of the yellow oxide. I'll grab this other one. So I'll get that back on my brush. Look at that one, that's better. This is a flow. Now we'll pick up some of the white on that and marble it if we can. <laughs> now this sort of wants to feed into that darker colour. That's the way I like to do it. Sort of get it up into there, bring it down, load your brush up. You now I'm not painting this in, I'm dabbing it and stamping it on. Alright? And then this is going to feather out until we get to the the area where it's going to look like a field in the distance. So if anything, I'm trying to keep them long and following the lay of the land. Get some up in here. Get it all down. So we're doing that, okay? Get some up in there. See, why I'm stamping it on. See here, this is the colour I want. This sort of light, lighter yellow oxide and whatnot. And then as I'm doing this, it's slowly coming off the brush as I'm doing it because I want here, I'm gonna wipe the brush now. On camera, that looks very light, but it's not that bad in real life. Now, I wanna damp some of that into that brown there, just so it's not so harsh. It's sort of merging them, just little bits, getting rid of any deculated looking brush strokes that you're not happy with. Merging it all in there like that. We don't need to wash our brush, we can just give it a wipe. Pick up the Van Dyke Brown again. Okay, pick it up. And we'll put some dark values back where we want them, where we might have lost too many. So this is just gonna put some dark under those lights there. Just like that. Maybe some, now the light's hitting that ridge so I don't really wanna Bring some back here. Just giving it some darker values that we might have lost, okay? Okay. I'm happy with that. Now we just wanna fix this side up, all right? So we'll grab some of our black and our white. Now these sky colors, I've missed them with water because I've gotta keep them. I'm gonna show you why when we do our trees. So we're gonna grab some of this into a gray. Now we want to come down in a nice sweeping manner, starting from this way. And what I'm looking for is the, the top edge of everything, bringing it down, okay? So we're sort of, boom, 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 where I get, make contact. And then I want to bring that down. And I'll go again, dark in there, boom, 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 boom. There's the edge, I want to bring it down. Okay, and probably along the, the edge there. Where are we? This can be solid over here and feather it back out there. Get it right into there. Now, just wiping the brush, not cleaning it. Picking up our white. It's still going to be sort of that colour, but less intense. And we want to kind of highlight the edge there like so. That ridge 
chisel the edge of your brush again. I might come this, oh, I don't want it really. And this is, all right, now I'm just gonna wipe all that paint off the brush so I can use that same brush. That paint is still wamp, damp and tacky. I wanna just merge that now, just, just merge it so it's not so cartoony. And you can step back and play with this and detail it as much as you want on this side of your painting. But for me now, I've just got to move along and carry on. But that's roughly, we've got our depths and shadows in there. All right, that was very easy. I've dried that now because we're going to lay the field area into there and we don't want it mudding up with this brown and everything. I'm normally, I've got my colours here which is forest green, sap green and yellow green and I've got some white as well. So I've got virtually three shades of green happening there to get different values in my area over there, alright? And this is the part of the video where I like to have a bit of my coffee, my cold coffee from a carton. It's a hot day out here in Perth today. I've got the air conditioner on and it's very muggy outside. All right, so I'm gonna use a flat brush again for this. Now I've just mystified some water over there uh, and I wanna, the same way I did these colors, I wanna do it with the green. So come over here, okay. Now I'm gonna start with the darker color. So I'm picking up the forest green. That's the darkest of my ones there. And we'll come virtually across the ridge first, somewhere there, and start tapering this in where I want my field, how far I want it running in and up to the rock and into the rock everywhere. It's sort of tapered and spiderwebbed everywhere through there, all right? So I'm sort of going like that. Could probably get some little bits all the way that made it to the edge there. There we go. And then we'll slowly getting this. I'm gonna, I've got to stamp it in all the black here. I can leave bits of pockets of black if I want, but not too many big pieces because this is a long way away from the area of the well, from the position whoever took this photo. I always look at a painting like, oh, this was the photo someone took. <laughs> now, I'm damping it on, getting this first color on, and as it's coming off the brush and taking less, taking more off the brush, I sort of come in here to merge it a bit softer. See that? So it's not just a line. You can have little softy bits here as well, scraggly bits. Now, all right, I've dried this green with my hair dryer and now we're going to pick up the sap green. Come, try and find your areas. Not too much, you're leaving some of that dark there for shadow and depth. Over the top ridge now. Because if anything, in my mind, this ridge is rolling over and coming out towards the point of vision where you're standing and looking at this or wherever you took the photo of it this is how it turned out now we're sort of going to come and uh, uh, trace it into there here and there little bits and pieces all right that's the second color now with the third colour, I'm just going to try something here. I'm just going to wipe that on my paper towel, that sap green. That's the middle toned colour. And we'll pick up this one. Don't want this too bright. We've got to leave some dark values now. I'm finding all the bits that are up the mountain first. Getting them done. Train my brush. I'll call it training my brush, which means when you've been using it on your canvas and it's gone all bent like that, that's a big blob there, you know, you don't want to be painting little smiley mouths on there. So 
what I mean by training, I'm just going to say that we're tra we'll train it back flat the way you want it, see? Okay. And you can just be very light with this. Now, if anything, I want this light bit on the top of the things and the dark under. If you put it the wrong way, you'll know and learn from those mistakes. Now, let's go, see here, we'll get it on the horizon there. And if anything, I can create shapes in this distant field here, like valleys and things like that. I'm gonna shape the brush again, train the brush. And you can see what's happening here. It's, we're getting, well, I'm getting the desired look that I'm trying to achieve here. Just about done, so, what I want to do, see this V bit? I'll come off there and come right across. That's putting that in front of that behind bit. Okay. Not cleaning my brush from the yellow green, getting some white and we want to, see that's too yellowy white. I don't want that. We don't want to destroy it we just want a subtle highlight on that yellow green just to create the actual movement and visual lays of the land now I'll start from here because break it up a bit just sort of create that bit coming over and let it fade Now that brush, I've just washed it and rubbed the water off, so it's sort of still lacing this. I'm getting rid of those ugly brush strokes. See, I'm sitting all this down now, but not too much where it's gonna mush it up to like a, 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 a light mist. We're gonna put some trees along here, but we're gonna, because this is quite a long way away, we're gonna create the, we're gonna get the color done with some atmosphere and like, the colour of the sky is the tone we're going to blend into the tree colours to get that distant atmosphere colour. You know how things are lighter when they're further away. Now, down here we have the greens for the trees. Now there's the sky colour. I've just put a bit over here. And our sky, our trees are going to be green. So we're going to just slowly fade that Tone that down with our sky colour. See, that's the distant trees there. And even more distant to that would be that. Far away, getting closer and closer, you see? Now these are gonna be sort of Australian trees. All right, now we've got our green with our, toned down with our atmosphere colour. Now where do we want some trees roughly? These are very small, so they're just gonna be sort of coming down. They're all scattered everywhere here. I'm just using a small flathead brush that's been quite banged around and tampered, which I like. Now these are all over the place in the background. Keep the, the tops of them very feathered and opened up, not solid because they're far away. All right. Even have some up the hill there if you want. You can even go as far as um, mixing up, a, even putting a bit extra sky colour into that to get the further away ones. We'll just sort of put it around like that. That'll do. Actually, I'll do that. Look, let's get a real further away one, just up the hill to be, so you'll get an idea what I mean. A bit more. So these ones are even, they're smaller and further away, okay? I don't know if I should have done that or not, but we've gone and done it. But see that, they've got trees there up the hill. These are, these are trees, big trees, but long way away. Now we've got to shadow those ones that you can see. 
I'm going to grab another flathead brush. Now, this color here, I will use as a shadow for those ones over there. So what I'm going to do is put it on and just try and find some shadow. How's that? Let me just look in the monitor and see if that's sitting it down. Where was that one I just did? I'll do this one here, sitting it down, sitting it down. Is that working here? Yeah, that's all right. Just these distant ones here, sit them down. Okay. Long way away. Now let's put something in front of here. So we had our forest green and we toned it down with our sky color. Now that color there, grab a little bit more of this color and put into it, just to get a bit now we're putting the bit darker in there, bringing it forward. Okay, in front of those distant ones. Up and over, sort of chop it up and over like so. Now over this side, it's a bit closer, so I'm not gonna put the atmosphere toner in it. I just wanna get some of the, a, a group of trees here that are coming over there, onto the hill there. Something down here. Just using the dark one, I'll come right up here. Feather out those tops off the side of the painting and bring it down like that. All right. I'm going to wipe that brush and picking up the yellow green now and highlight all this. These are still distant but closer than what's there. You could have these as evergreens, I, don't, I, just, I just want to do these sort. Alright, I've done that. Now I'm picking up just the darker out of the three greens, the forest green, and I want to carefully cast some shadows from all this. Get some base shadows there, blend it in there somewhere, get some base shadows in all here, bleed it out. This creates the ins and outs of it all. Merge it into this front bit, because then we're going to have all that as flat field. All right, to finish that off, I'm picking up the yellow green on the little flathead brush. And where those shadows were, we want to bring all this foreground towards the bank but leaving those shadows there okay it's gonna kind of sink everything we can scratch it whatever just so we got some shadow under those trees and in here we want to create the bank coming to the water here so it's like escarpment you've got the the hills and the large trees and all this is just flat land coming forward to the water's edge I'm just mixing up some more Van Dyke brown with some white and very carefully, I want to create 
a bank bleeding into the water here on the edge here because we've got dirt at the end of that bank there. So I'm just going to crisscross it, get it in. It can bleed up through some of that field if you want. And here's a bit closer. I've sorted this bit here, I've made just a little bit darker than that brown over there, just because it's closer. Now grabbing some of the white and a bit of the atmosphere sky colour, I've come over here, made it a very dirty white, and I'm just using a flathead brush because I hate knives, and we're going to get the water kissing against that bank, very thin lines. Can you see how small they are? Now we're kissing this across, hitting the bank, and I'm gonna slowly add some white to it to give a bit more crest and shimmer in the water there. Over that. How's that looking in the monitor? And we'll of course put some some of this in the water there, right? Grab another flathead brush, which is damp and white, because I want to push that. Oh, see it's let's push that into the water, blend it a bit. That's it. Now I'm going to have to wipe that brush, it's too wet. Okay, let's get that again. Yeah, that's it. Beautiful. We're just pushing some highlights into that water. Just getting the pure white now to finish this off. Put some pure white bits there. Splashing up against the edges here. Just pure white. And some shimmering just over this. Just the, the very thinnest. Try and keep them very straight as well. Those thicker ones. That's it. Now see the sky colour? I'm picking some of that up. And like I did on one of my other paintings there, we're going to just, for the shadow in the water, this is going to do all our scallops. Pick a bit more up. And you can see what it's doing. What did I use for that? I used a flathead brush for that. And this is adding different shadows into that water, but we're using the color from the sky, so it's going to suit. Now this is going to have a simple foreground in front of the whole lot of this. Now I want to use some of this type of foreground in the front, just on this corner and maybe this corner. I'm going to grab the darker of the green, put it there, about there. See how I've left it all hairy and loose at the top? Coming off the painting there, scratch it up. That's it. And the same over this side, just to cover that. Scratch it up. Get that there down in the bottom. Now I'm grabbing the middle colored green, the sap green on my hog bristle fan brush. 
I want to get it from the bottom. I've dried this green here. So I'm getting it from about there. And I want to start scratching that up, leaving some of the darker bits there. That'll do. Get it up there. And the same on this side. So we'll put it down the bottom. And then scratch it up. Picking up the yellow oxide. I've put it on my brush. I want to wipe it off. And I want to get some of this scratched up in there as well like that. If it's still wet, I might have to dry it. I think I will dry it. All right, and we'll get some of this scratched up. Leaving a lot of those greens there. Don't overkill it with this yellow oxide. I'll get the very bottom done and see if I can scratch that up. Beautiful. And to finish it off, get some of that yellow green and just the lightest of highlights through that and dry your paint again if you think it's going to bleed. If you've got a better brush to get this effect, by all means use it. I'm just using what I've got. I'm just going to finish this off with some white mixed with um, Van Dyke Brown and put a few trunks in the depth of these bushes here. My head's not in the way of that, just to give it some more sense of life within these shrubs here. Use whatever works for you, I'm just using this little flathead. And then I'll put a frame on it and we'll see how she looks. Yeah, I'll, I'll see what I'll do off camera with that. But, oh yeah, that's sort of given it a bit of justice out there. Because these are big trees, but because they're so far away, they're just so small. Almost do a few, and I'll sink them back as well. Just boom, 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 keeping them on the shadow floor of everything. That'll do. Now I've picked up the white paint, I've just rubbed it off my little brush, and I'm putting atmosphere between us and those trees as they were quite loud. So I'm, nothing on the brush, and nothing's hardly coming on until I press, but I'm just putting this atmosphere and mist on the lower part here so it just looks like it's coming down the hill okay so let me look in the monitor yeah so i've sort of got it coming down the gorge the valley the hill the mountain and it's going to come forward and float over that lake because mist comes from water sources and that's how i did the mist at the top of the mountain as well just put it on the brush wipe it off and come from the sky and over the top there. Now let's put a frame on that and see how she looks. They always look lovely in a frame, don't they, eh? That's not too shabby, is it? We've got our mountain, we've got a foreground lake, we've got some mist over the distant forest there, and we've got some of the cloud coming over the top of the mountain, and hopefully those clouds look more like they're coming over our head instead of flat, all right? All right, I hope you enjoyed this exercise in acrylic for beginners out there. There's a lot of basic, easy steps if you follow along and practice them before you commit to them. A lot of people have trouble doing things because they try and do them straight away. You do need to practice, all right? Now, if you like what I've just done here, you tell your friends, but if you don't, you and your friends tell everybody, all right? All the best, goodbye, good luck, and good on ya.